Patty Yell, number one Marmaduke fan here. Uh, two per perfect books today. So I reviewed a few volumes of Again by Mitsuro Kubo already. I've already declared this to be like on the short list of greatest comics I've ever read. Uh, volume seven kind of finally finishes up the current story arc she was working on and she starts a new story arc. So I'll probably read a few more volumes to comment on the new uh, direction she's heading. Just real short, like really good, actually flawed female characters, a variety of uh, male and female characters that uh, she gets into their heads. She shows you kind of like their thoughts and their complexity. They develop. Uh, she gets kind of like the fear of being a lonely young boy. And she gets, uh, I don't know, like, like I said before, like her her female characters, they are, none of her characters actually, all, they don't just fit into like a static mold. Uh, even like her faces uh, line up with that. She doesn't just draw the same anime face over and over again. She draws characters you can instantly recognize by, you know, changing their appearance. She, she has like multiple styles. She's got like this cool paintbrush style that's kind of creepy and rich and lived in. And then maybe like the more a clean line style for the rest of it. She does this really cool thing where uh, she uses a lot of uh, like silent energetic scenes to build tension during like the cheering sessions. Like I like how she uses action lines throughout everything to imply motion. She's just like top tier, like easily a greatest of all time level talent with good writing skills to boot. So very funny, very interesting. So second book is uh, Ronald Wimberley's Prince of Cats, and the Prince of Cats is Tybalt from uh, Romeo and Juliet, and I, I love this. So uh, the introduction kind of gives a good sum up of it. Uh, John Jennings, a professor of media studies, writes the introduction. I kind of love and hate it because he talks a lot about intersectionalism and the construction of black identity. The second I hear the word intersectionalism, like if you're not being sarcastic, if, if you're a black man talking about intersectionalism, just hand your black card to the women's studies professor in your faculty already and get get a shirt that's saying uh, I'm scared of the, uh, I'm scared of being dragged before HR but the rest of his essay is actually pretty good because uh he talks about the idea of what remixing is and how remixing is important to hip hop culture and I think that's important for the arts too the act of grabbing from lots of different sources and making your own thing so yeah like Romeo and Juliet guides the plot. Uh, Wimberly does change the plot to make it make Tim Tybalt more of a complete character than he is in the play. He's, he's kind of just a dick in uh, Shakespeare's original play. And uh, But Wimberly so respects Shakespeare, and I think he show so gets the themes of Romeo and Juliet that he successfully, in his version of it, reinforces Shakespeare's theme by taking it from his own angle. He also has like a great kick in art style. So like, all, all, instead of like using knives, all the gang wars use, you know, samurai swords in his world. Uh, Johnson mentions a few possible sources of inspiration like Kurosawa, uh, Wu-Tang Clan, some action movies I haven't seen. I personally see a lot of influence of uh, Frank Miller on this style. Even like the guy's sunglasses kind of evoke the mutants from uh, The Dark Knight Returns. There's obviously like a good dose of anime uh, in this. It wouldn't surprise me if he's watched some Zatoichi. He's even got uh, one of the characters uses a Zatoichi style uh, king, cane sword. Uh, uh, another interesting thing about Wimberly's art style is the color is really good. It kind of creates this funky uh, vibe throughout everything. He uses simple shapes a lot, especially like during the running and jumping scenes. They'll be they'll just like uh, simplify to really simple little figures, but they have a lot of motion to them. And he gets how to tran cap really to capture the essence of Shakespeare and make it translatable. So, like if you tried to read Shakespeare in high school, your teacher made you read it and you didn't like it. Uh, my, my advice is go back and reread Shakespeare and pay attention this time. Grab a dictionary if you have to, but Shakespeare will teach you how to write good characters. And really, almost all good characters since Shakespeare owe a debt to Shakespeare because of the, the complex kind of thought life and problems he gave to his characters. So when, uh, I think this is Samson, when Samson roasts Tybalt, Tybalt just gives him the dead eye stare and kind of like uh, put, uh, tell, tell Samson to back off a little bit, right? Like this kind of thing, this is kind of making clear to the reader who doesn't get Shakespeare what's going on using pictorial language. That's great. Uh, it reminds me of Will Eisner. Will Eisner has a great section in one of his books where he takes uh, to be or not to be from Hamlet, and he puts it in the mouth of a young thug with a knife. And by 
putting so much emphasis on uh, the young thug's uh, you know, expression and body language. He captures the feel of what to be or not to be means in comics format in kind of like an 80s uh, uh, urban you know, gang war settings. And of course, like everyone says, oh, Romeo and Juliet's a romance. Romeo and Juliet is mostly about Italians having gang wars and uh, messing with each other. So I think that's just an inspired idea. Uh, jumping ahead, there, uh, Tybalt is a minor character in Shakespeare's play, and mo you really should read it so that you understand what is and what isn't Shakespeare in this, because in fleshing out Tybalt, like, the big question is, why does Tybalt hate the Montagues so much? Why is he so eager to throw his life away? And the theme that gets built is, uh, for, for young men like Tybalt, uh, they feel trapped, like, Tybalt feels like he's becoming white by going to a private school, and the allure of being a badass on the streets and killing people is the belief that you will be strong, you will get revenge, you will you will be cool and be seen as cool in the eyes of your peers. And so you stupidly are willing to throw your life away in, in that pursuit. Uh, the pastor says, those who live by the sword shall perish by it. And Tybalt responds, ye shall, ye shall live by the sword and serve thy brother. And the day will come when ye shall rule and break his yoke off uh, uh, off your neck, Genesis 27, 4. So that's the tragedy of the character is he's young, he has this brilliant mind, he has all of this potential before him, but his thirst, his thirst for that power, his thirst for being at the top of the list of top duelists is what causes him to throw everything away. Uh, lots of great like silent scenes where, you know, uh, color is used well to kind of communicate to you. He's thinking back, this is the present, this is the past. He's building up towards doing something. Uh, lots of jumping back and forth in time, uh, lots of like appropriating some hip hop culture and rap lyrics and then mixing the, those up with Shakespeare's verse. Lots of great pop problematic scenes of girls talking uh, about sex and double entendre. This is not a feminist book, all right? Not nice try, Jennings. This is an intersectional. This is super problematic and I love it. Uh, in, oh, what's this? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. There's there's not of which to speak. It's whack, thoroughly. A black, no. More a bright void, a white hole. A droll necropolis where boys wordly preserve their life yet forfeit their soul. So, the, the foolishness of feeling trapped and feeling like you're not a man drives young men into these stupid gang wars because uh, they feel like there's life or there's soul in that short, uh, in that short, passionate, violent violent life. But then the problem is when you're bleeding out on the ground or when your fr friend is dead, it's not it's not that fun anymore. And are you stuck in it forever? Is there any redemption from that? Uh, Romeo's kind of a simp in this. He, I think he's coded to be kind of like a, uh, oh, what's his name? What's the white rapper's name? The guy who s raps Mom Spaghetti? I'm showing how little I know about hip hop. Eminem, all right? He's kind of coded as an Eminem, like a white boy who's intruding into uh, their territory. But He's really good with his sword, but he's just kind of he's kind of a douche, uh, which makes sense since this is Tybalt's story and we're seeing things from Tybalt's perspective. Uh, I marked this. Oh, typo! Should have hired me. You left the you, you left the info there. There's one more page I gotta find. This this is okay. So this is Mercutio and Tybalt like tr uh, exchanging words with each other. And when Tybalt says, I am for you, right? That's kind of an archaic phrase. That's one of those phrases from Shakespeare that might not translate. So what Wimberly is doing in his art is he is showing visually the one. Oops, I'm out of space. Get this book. Wimberly really gets it. Great atmosphere and mood. Uh, a very unique uh, example of the use of comics as a medium. Very respectful take on Shakespeare. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. I want to I own it. And some great concept art at the end showing his process and how he ev evolves things over time. Fantastic book. Highest recommendation. Two highest recommendations. Love you. Catch you later.